Hello and welcome to Esther's Gardening Adventures. I'm Esther and to, in this video I'm going to be showing you how my seedlings are doing that have grown in my winter sowing containers. So basically this these are seedlings for my spring and summer garden although now we're doing the summer garden plants um, both flowers and vegetables and herbs that I have grown using a process where you put your soil and your seeds and all that in things like milk jugs and soda bottles you put them outside for the winter instead of growing them indoors under grow light so it's a little bit of a different process than many people are used to but it works really well for growing almost everything i've tried so let's get outside and see how everything is doing this is the stage in winter sowing at which it's just a hot mess <laughs> uh, if you saw my last video you heard me mention that i'm sort of in a state of action paralysis where um I don't really feel comfortable transplanting out these things into the front yard, which is where most of them would go um, until after this pest treatment is done. So the first jug we have here is salvia. Oh man, I didn't write it well on either side. And this, it's ready to go. It's beautiful. <laughs> this one is really healthy. I opened this about two days ago. Um, and the reason I've opened these is because it was raining a lot, we had a lot of heat, and some of the leaves on some of the plants were starting to get mildewy and just unhappy, and they were growing out the tops and stuff. So I just said, okay, let me go ahead and open them up, give them a few days of air, make sure I water them well. Some of them do need more water. This one's doing okay at the moment. Um, but yeah, the salvia is ready to be planted up, and it's looking really great. Here's my half jugs of hillbilly flame tomatoes some of them this is the container that wasn't having such a good time um and it looks like yeah a little damage from getting too wet but i do need to water them as well this well there's moisture down in there but yeah i'll give them some more water today and the brandywine tomatoes you can see they've got all kinds of angles and they do that sometimes, but you know what? In this case, it's okay because I kind of know where the brandy wine tomatoes are versus the hillbilly flame tomatoes. Here I have a transplant of one of my cherry tomatoes that I'm giving to a, a local cause. There's like a community garden that helps, I think, homeless children know how to garden or something. I'm not quite sure how it works, but um, it's, this is the plant I'm giving to them as well as some others that I potted up. Here's the Abe Lincoln tomatoes and Rutgers tomato, which is a determinant. Look at this stunning Rutgers tomato. Look how thick this stem is. This is a happy tomato. And you know, while these tomatoes look like they're ready to be transplanted out, um, you know, because <laughs> they don't like they're doing like in this situation, but that tomato, those tomatoes look fine. So I don't feel like any of them are getting so stressed that they can't handle, um, you know, staying in the jugs for a few more days. Here's my Cherokee tomatoes and my zebra tomatoes. Let's see, the Cherokees are looking nice. They are having the spotting happening here. If anybody knows, I think this is just maybe from water or maybe, um, I'm not sure what's causing that. I will really remove those leaves though. But, again, even though, and I don't mind that they're at an angle because I will plant them. I can plant them in the soil at a semi-angle and then just have them grow up from there because they can grow stems all along, roots all along this part. <laughs> now, here's two jugs that <laughs> I'm really having a hard time with. And it's not because they're not doing well. It's because I... It's this action paralysis I talked about yesterday, as well as additional factor of I've never grown either of these before. I'm still deciding where I'm going to plant them. And this is wild wood oats or sea oats or Indian wood oats. And you can already see how nicely they um, blow in the breeze. I planted all, a lot of seedlings and in fact you can see a chunk here where I took away I gave some seedlings away uh, at the plant swap uh, in April but they're doing great 
I need to, I'm only gonna use like two or three of these guys because each one gets really bushy and um, each one gets really bushy and um, you know, I know where I'm gonna put them, but it's gonna be right close to where they're gonna be treating the house foundation. So I'm not going to be uh, transplanting them until after that. And then there is the yarrow, which <laughs> I only need like two plants of this and I over sewed it as uh, a lot of people do and I need to get these transplanted out soon and give away the rest and pot up the rest or just toss it who knows um, hopefully I can find people who will be takers locally for it here are yesterday I potted up please tell me I relabeled this one this is the one I didn't relabel I know I relabeled okay these are Roma tomatoes. I put don't prune. Um, so technically with winter sowing, the whole idea is you go straight from the container to your garden. You transplant it directly and you can do that. There's, that's what it's meant for. That's how I typically use it. But because I'm splitting these up between myself and my mother, I'm also giving some away. It's easier for me to go ahead and pot up, you know, I put holes in the bottoms or the sides of the containers. It's easier for me to pot up the tomatoes and mark them like this is one I'm going to give away. Obviously, I put, don't prune on it to that group I talked about earlier in the video. Um, let's find one. This is mom. This is one of yours. She's going to have for her garden. And so I like to kind of decide where they're going to go as I'm potting them up. Um, and there's another reason that it's a good idea to pot them up at the same time is because I have split jugs. And to be honest, this was a split jug. I took out a seedling and I didn't remember which side was which and the tags had fallen out. And so I know half of this jug is yellow pear tomato and the other half is Gardener's Delight, which is also a cherry tomato. So at least they're the same kind of tomato, sort of, in that, you know, they're small tomatoes, not beefsteak or something. But basically, I'm going to be taking a risk with whatever I plant up of these that I could be planting two t pear tomatoes, two Gardener's Delight tomatoes. I'm not sure because I didn't take care of labeling. So when I have a split jug like this in the future, it, before I take any seedlings out of any split jugs in the future, I'm going to I'm going to make sure I know which half is which and I'm going to either pot them up or label them or maybe I'll put a piece a loose piece of colored um, yarn from my crochet collection that never gets used something like that to help designate which one is which so I don't get them confused all right next up remember when my nasturtiums got all damaged from the winter well other than some of the low leaves dying they're doing fine and honestly because I had the volunteers in the garden I don't need these guys so I need to give them away or pop them up Oh, I should mention for the Roma tomatoes. Guys, I planted eight seeds and I got eight tomato plants out of it. And these were dollar store tomatoes. So if you're ever wondering if dollar store tomatoes are viable and good quality, there's an answer for you, which uh, you know I found to be true all over the place. Now there's a few jugs that don't have sprouts yet. That includes the marigolds that was from Ferry Morris. It's a year old thing. Um, oh, hey guys, another discovery. The sweet orange peppers that I got from the seeds that I got from that seed swap in April are sprouting. Look how many. Oh, mom, you're going to have lots of sweet orange pepper plants. And uh, I, might, I might grow one too because the orange bell peppers are so fun. And they're so expensive in the grocery store. Here's lemon balm, winter sown. You can see how well it works. In fact, this is growing better than the ones, no, it's doing about the same as the ones that came back from last year. Um, I'm gonna give them, I'm keeping lemon balm and mints in containers. This is chocolate mint I got from a local farmer and some lavender I got from the co-op down the street. I am growing my own lavender, but I was, you know, I held it in my hand and then, um, by the way, sorry about the mowing in the background. You can't control what your neighbors are doing. Um, I held it in my hand. And then, let's see, white avens, still nothing. 
Nothing from the White Avens. We already talked about that one. Nothing from the Swamp Milkweed, unfortunately. Now these are the Christmas Lima Beans. These are the Christmas Lima Beans that got damaged from the freeze that I've just kind of let grow with the lid off. This far this year looks like they may have gotten some um, spider mites or maybe this was left over from when we had that freeze. <laughs> and then my mom saved porco tomato seeds from her garden last year. And these are apparently huge beefsteak tomatoes. And look how I planted a lot of the seeds thinking she didn't save the seeds right. <laughs> well, mom, looks like you did just fine because we have a la plethora. We have a porco tomato jug forest. <laughs> I don't even know how many is in here. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. More than 14 in this container. So I need to give some away. Uh, mom will get two or three. I'll keep at least one, if not two. Um, and uh, I'll be giving quite a few away. But that's the way, the fun of it. My zinnias are ready to be transplanted. And I just can't do it yet. I can't do it. Watch that video, you'll know why. Uh, the Moringa seedling has finally sprouted last time. None of the seeds had sprouted, and now we have those. Uh, I'm not gonna go through all the stuff in the jugs, but I will show you the eggplants that I grow, including the single eggplant, which I believe is the one that's up in the top there, top of this frame, um, are great. Yesterday, I opened up my Lakota squash and my Cassaretti squash. The Lakota is a winter squash and the Cassaret, let me see, what does it say? Caserta squash. Um, and I'm keeping tool, bridal tool on top of them until I transplant them because I don't want any vine borers to plant in them or uh, cucumber beetles or anyone to get to them until well, ever, and I'm actually gonna try using tool to protect them once they're also transplanted. These are cabbage seedlings. I don't need them. They're a little stressed because I haven't helped them out and I'm probably just gonna toss them because it's towards the end of the season for transplanting them. Uh, I should have offered them to the local community garden sooner, but lessons learned. <laughs> Another plant that's ready to be transplanted, but I can't yet, is my marigolds. These are marigolds see it says mine these are marigold seeds i saved from last year from the garden look how healthy and happy these guys are they're doing so wonderful this is pine this is a cone flower this is purple cone flower which is native to this area these are my calendula plants which are 100 percent. this one might even be getting ready to flower good god i need to get these guys in the ground this is why so frustrated with this inability to transplant yet. Some more marigolds. These are the ones I got um, as, a, as a gift. These are gonna be big marigolds. Back there we have um, my cleomes that are ready to be transplanted. I'm gonna be putting them over there near the shed so I need to prep that bed soon. So, that gives you a sense of what I've opened. Now the containers that I haven't opened yet, I think there may be at least one tomato plant I haven't opened yet. Um, but I haven't opened the peppers or the eggplant because they are much more sensitive to a frost and even to cool temperatures. And I wanna give them as much um, opportunity to grow and to succeed and um, all of that. So I'm probably gonna wait a couple more weeks to open those up and to transplant, but I'll give you a peek. Let's find one. Oh, bee bomb. I should open that up soon. It's looking good. Let's see some of the peppers. Well, I can show you. This is a ancho plebano pepper. It looks like somebody's in there eating some of the leaves. Hmm. Ancho plebano peppers. Oh yeah. I almost forgot to mention my Gilardia Indian basket flowers are pretty ready to be transplanted. <laughs> oh yeah. And you know what? I'm going to show you what's in the jugs anyway. Let's take a look. 
This is asters. I only had, these are supposed to be dwarf asters. I only had one sprout, but it's looking pretty healthy. Next up, while our swamp milkweed did not sprout, the butterfly weed did, which, you know what? I'm just as happy about to have any of them. And they're looking really, really happy. This one right here is very close to the top already. So I think they're definitely ready to be transplanted. I feel like I'm gonna be saying that a lot today. Basil large leaf. Slugs have gotten in and eaten some of the leaves for the large leaf, which is fine. I'll take care of that later, but it's the one that sprouted. So looking forward to transplanting that soon. My coxcomb, king coral. Now this is one that's a low laying coxcomb to the ground. The beautiful, beautiful coral look. Oh, guys, they are looking primed and ready to be transplanted. Catnip. Actually, let's open it up and see. Let's have a reveal here, guys. All right, I've taken off the tape. So now let's see. I'll set it here. A nice sunny reveal. Oh yeah, the catnip is ready. Looks like we did not have any shiso sprout at all, but that's okay. The catnip is definitely ready to be transplanted. Oh, and is that a weed? That's a weed. No weed. No, Mr. Weed, you are not allowed to grow in my jug. Yay! Not as if I don't have enough of the neighbor cats in my yard. This is definitely going to go in the front yard, not the backyard. Oh! I filmed it on Sunday without the eggplant, but guys, I've opened my eggplant. And <laughs> look how beautiful they are. This here is my single seed challenge eggplant if you've been watching and it is doing wonderfully stunning the leaves are healthy it's got this beautiful sort of purple tint to the stem the others are looking pretty good but you know the one that's happiest is the one that's in this corner by itself i have a feeling it's going to be the star of oh yeah that is a gorgeous gorgeous Eggplant! I cannot wait to eat your fruit. My tall red coxcomb I opened up yesterday, and it is doing... Oh, this one's looking a little curlier than I'd like. But they're doing pretty good for having been open for a day. They do take... If you've seen my other video, you know that all plants, even winter-sown ones, take a couple of days to acclimate to the conditions. It's not the same process as hardening like you would do for vegetables or flowers you grew indoors. But they do need a couple of days to adjust to, I believe we call it, to being naked to the, um, naked to the air. My Jimmy and Ardella peppers have not sprouted yet, and I have a feeling I may need to start them over again, because I really want some Jimmy and Ardella peppers. And these were seeds I said, oh no, this is Baker Creek variety. Hmm. Cosmos, a friend Anna sent, that were her grandmother's. Got one Cosmos growing. Looking forward to having that in the garden. Like I said, I've had one lavender sprout, and hey, the fact that I got lavender to sprout from seed at all, I think is a pretty good feat. I've heard it can be quite difficult. My fish peppers also have not sprouted yet, both mine and the ones from Baker Creek. I'm gonna give them both another week. We'll see. If not, I may have to not have fish peppers or Jimmy Nardella peppers this year. My jalapenos, guys. There's something in there. Slugs keep getting in and eating the leaves. Bad. Slugs have been bad this year for me. But the plants look healthy overall. Maybe not so much that one. But if I get two good ones, I'll be pretty happy with that. You know what? I'm going to open up the container, I think. Okay, so we have four plants, and I'd say this one and this one look like they're going to be okay. Maybe this one. This one definitely looks like it has been... This one definitely looks like it has been chewed down, unfortunately. We'll see how that one does. But uh, hey, two works for me. Uh, we'll just plant more of another variety. My Rudbeckia. Oh, that's doing well. Good. This is, um, these are my black-eyed Susans. Globe Amaranth. 
Oh, I wish I had more than two plants. They're such a great plant. But you know what? I think I had two plants that created some big bushes last year, so I can always plant them by seed um, directly out there, and then I'll have multi-generations of them. Oh, and before I sign off, let me mention real quick that I transplanted out some of the parsley that I winter sown, winter sowed, four plants, two curly leaf. Oh, it looks like maybe a squirrel or something killed this one. And uh, yeah, I think the squirrels or whoever it is likes to eat the flat leaf, but not the curly leaf. So uh, maybe I'll be growing curly leaf in my garden after all. And in fact, this is curly leaf from last year that reseeded and resprouted on its own. So I guess curly leaf parsley is in my future, guys. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. If you aren't already a subscriber, please consider doing so and make sure to have the alerts set so you get a heads up when I post new content. And uh, otherwise, I'll see you next time.